this video, we're going to cover amino acid metabolism, looking at how amino acids are oxidized and their different fates. So here's the structure of an amino acid, which contains an amino group, carboxylic acid, and a unique side chain. Now, if we take a look at the overview of amino acid catabolism, amino acid degradation includes removing the amino group and separating it from the carbon skeletons. So in this lecture, we are going to cover how the amino group is removed and the pathways of these carbon skeletons. And in the next lecture, we'll cover nitrogen excretion via the urea cycle. And as we go through, you'll see how these pathways and processes are connected. It's magical the way these pathways connect. So before we go through the pathways of amino acid degradation, let's step back and answer why we need protein in our diet. We have three sources of organic fuels. We have glucose from carbohydrates, fatty acids from fats, and amino acids from proteins. And when we talked about glucose oxidation, the objective was energy production. And this is one of the main reasons why we need protein. It's a source of energy. However, amino acids can't be stored. So we need to supply amino acids for protein synthesis. And we can't actually synthesize all of the amino acids ourselves. So there are two types of amino acids. We have essential and non-essential. So examples of essential are histidine, isoleucine, and leucine. And examples of non-essential are alanine, glutamate, and aspartate. And essential amino acids must come from the diet. So this leads us to how do we actually break down dietary proteins? We'll just touch on it real quick, okay? So this occurs in the gastrointestinal tract. When dietary protein enters the stomach, this stimulates the gastric mucosa to secrete the hormone gastrin. And this is going to stimulate the secretion of hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen. And this is going to decrease the pH of the stomach. And the low pH denatures the proteins and unfolds globular proteins. Another thing that happens because of the low pH is we have an inactive precursor called pepsinogen, and this is going to be converted to pepsin. So then pepsin will hydrolyze the proteins, breaking it down to smaller peptides. The proteins will then go to the small intestine, and acidity will be neutralized by secreting bicarbonate. And this is secreted by the pancreas. The pancreas will also secrete proteases, which will break down the peptides into amino acids. The amino acids will then be absorbed by the small intestine, the epithelial cells linking the small intestine. And amino acids can then enter the blood capillaries and travel to the liver. Most amino acids are metabolized in the liver. Okay, so let's go back to the overview of amino acid catabolism and subtract complexity by going through how the amino group is removed via the process called transamination, where we are just transferring the amino group. Now, ammonia is very toxic and causes severe damage and complications, and we'll touch on that later on again. We have our amino acid here, and it will transfer its amino group to become an alpha keto acid. So an alpha keto acid is just an amino acid without an amino group. So where or who does it transfer the amino group to? So alpha ketoglutarate is going to accept the amino group and becomes glutamate. This is a reversible process where we are just transferring the amino group from the amino acid to alpha ketoglutarate. And the amino acid becomes an alpha keto acid, the carbon skeleton, and alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate. So now glutamate has the amino group. So glutamate is a collector of amino groups and a donor of amino groups. The enzymes catalyzing this process, transamination process, are called amino transferases or transaminases. Now, all amino transferases have coenzymes called pyridoxal phosphate or PLP. And PLP is bound to the enzyme. And what PLP does is it accepts the amino group from the amino acid, and the alpha keto acid then accepts the amino group from PLP. So PLP 
is that intermediate that accepts and passes the amino group. And there are different types of transaminases, and they are named depending on the amino group they're not. So let's go through an example, okay, using alanine from muscles. Alanine can transport amino groups to the liver via the glucose alanine cycle. Let's break this down. So during muscle contraction, glycolysis occurs, so converting glucose to pyruvate. So pyruvate levels are high in muscles. Now, recall at the start of the lecture, I said that amino acids are used as fuel, and glutamate accepts amino groups, so then in muscle, glutamate is going to transfer its amino group to pyruvate, producing alanine. And this is catalyzed by alanine amino transferase. Now, once we've produced alanine, alanine is going to travel into the blood and to the liver. And once it's in the liver, okay, in the cytosol of liver cells, the amino group from alanine is going to be donated to alpha ketoglutarate. And we produce pyruvate and glutamate. And the enzyme, you've guessed it, is alanine amino transferase. So if we take a closer look at the transamination reaction that's occurring here, let's zoom in. Alanine transfers its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, so here's the amino group here, and we're forming pyruvate and glutamate. And once we've produced pyruvate, pyruvate can be converted back to glucose via gluconeogenesis. And this is the glucose alanine cycle. So now glutamate has the amino group. So then glutamate moves from the cytosol of liver cells to the mitochondrial matrix. And the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase converts glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate via a process called oxidative deamination. So the enzyme is removing the amino group so that it can be safely excreted from the body. And we're going to cover this in the urea cycle lecture. Now, recall when you hear a dehydrogenase enzyme involved that NAD plus or NADH is also involved. So in this enzyme here, Glutamate dehydrogenase is the only enzyme that can use NAD plus or NADP plus as an electron acceptor. So in this reaction, water is also needed to remove the amino group. So this alpha ketoglutarate here can enter the citric acid cycle or even be used to synthesize glucose. And that is how the amino group of amino acids are removed via a process called transamination where we're just transferring the amino group from a donor to an acceptor. Okay, so now let's go back to the overview amino acid catabolism again. And we've just covered how the amino group of amino acids are removed. So now let's go through how the carbon skeletons derived from amino acids are degraded and how they can enter the citric acid cycle. This is beautiful, okay? So there are different paths that amino acids degradation can lead to. The carbon skeletons can be shunted to gluconeogenesis. So gluconeogenesis is a process where we're synthesizing glucose from non-carbohydrate sources when, our low, when we have low blood glucose levels. Or it can lead to ketogenesis. This is where we're producing ketone bodies. This is our alternate energy source when glucose is unavailable, for example, when we're fasting. Or it can enter the citric acid cycle and be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. So let's go through how the carbon skeletons that we've derived from amino acids enter the citric acid cycle. So here's the citric acid cycle. Look at its beauty here. The carbon skeletons derived from amino acids can enter this cycle through alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl CoA, fumarate, and oxaloacetate. So there are six amino acids that can be broken down to pyruvate. So pyruvate can then be converted to acetyl CoA and enter the citric acid cycle to be oxidized, or pyruvate can be converted to oxaloacetate and be diverted to gluconeogenesis. And the way the cell dictates whether it's going to enter the citric acid cycle or going to be diverted to gluconeogenesis depends on the cell's energy state. 
So when we have lower ATP levels, pyruvate is going to be converted to acetoacetate. I mean, pyruvate is going to be converted to acetyl-CoA and enter the citric acid cycle. That's when we have lower ATP levels. And when we have high ATP levels, pyruvate is going to be converted to oxaloacetate and be diverted to gluconeogenesis. And the reason for this is because gluconeogenesis requires energy. Now, there are some amino acids that can be transformed to acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA can then be converted to acetoacetyl-CoA. And some amino acids can be degraded to acetoacetyl-CoA, and these can produce ketone bodies. Now, there are five amino acids that can enter the citric acid cycle as alpha-ketoglutarate. So glutamate can be converted to alpha-ketoglutarate, and there's four amino acids that can be turned to glutamate. So we have arginine, glutamine, histidine, and proline. And there are four amino acids that can be converted to succinyl-CoA, and few amino acids can enter via fumarate. And there are two amino acids that can be converted to oxaloacetate. And again, oxaloacetate can be diverted to gluconeogenesis to produce glucose. So we can see that these amino acid pathways can produce ketone bodies or glucose. Therefore, they can be classified as either ketogenic or glucogenic amino acids. This means that it can be converted into ketone bodies or glucose. So that is amino acid metabolism. In this lecture, we learned the importance of proteins in our diet and how we have three organic fuels, glucose from carbohydrates, fatty acids from fats, and amino acids from proteins. We broke down amino acid degradation and how this includes the removal of amino groups from amino acid via a process called transamination, and how the carbon skeletons derived from amino acid degradation have different fates and can enter different pathways such as ketone body formation, or it can enter the citric acid cycle via alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, fumarate, or oxaloacetate. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to EKG Science so you don't miss a single lecture. And remember, subtract complexity and slow it down. To study the next lecture, simply click the next video or you can view the entire metabolism playlist. Hey, stop procrastinating.